You appear for duty, jury duty when you're called. So many of us try to get out of jury duty. And really, this is, as Jefferson's correct, it's an anchor against tyranny in government. And it's also, when you've got a real criminal, you know, it's our duty to see that criminal is taken off the streets. So, uh, it, it, this is service to our country. And by the way, that reminds me, we're always thanking military people for service to our country. It's another way to serve your country and your fellow men. And I want to thank you for your service and what you do here because this is another area of service to our community, our fellow man, and our country. And so is the jury. It's very important. We shouldn't try to get out of jury duty if we have any way to actually serve. Um, so you have an impact on the life of one defendant uh, in, in your community. And of all the things that I do in the political arena, uh, may end up worthless, may end up really not causing any change. You can impact one life. And it could be a situation where maybe the guy did something, but the government wants to punish him to an extreme. And you think that punishment is unjust. So you can you can deal with and, and help affect that one life. Now next one. So appear when you can. Go ahead. Pay attention to all the witnesses and the evidence. Listen respectfully, listen respectfully to the fellow jurors. Vote your conscience, even if you're the only juror. If this is what you think is right, hang on to it. We see how mob mentalities work. Uh, you know, in the old westerns, we see people going out to lynch somebody, and it turns out it's the wrong guy. And maybe one person stands up and says, "No, we're not lynching them. We're going to give them a try." And find, and we find out the person was innocent. So, and render a just verdict. So like I say, the jury, jury, idea of jury nullification is not to nullify these laws that we all agree with. You know, somebody causes harm to another human being, they should pay a price for that. Someone doesn't cause harm to anybody, but it's just overreach of government, like the William Penn trial, like the freedom of religion, like the Fugitive Slave Act. We vote our conscience and say no, not guilty. Next one now. The defendant is innocent to proven guilty. The facts of the case, consider the credibility of the witnesses and the evidence, mitigating circumstances, fairness of the law, and fairness of the law's application in the trial. You know, how many times have we heard or seen in movies, I was just following the law. You know, how that was an excuse for the, for the Nazis and whatnot. And it's still, people use that as an excuse, that we're just following the law, but it's a law of justice. And you know, the other argument is that you're not, you gotta respect the law, or you lose respect for, everybody loses respect for the law, and that was Abraham Lincoln's argument. Well, my, my rebuttal is, if you have a law that's not respectable, then you're causing all law to be not respectable. Your people lose faith in the law. Next one now. And this is by Martin Luther King Jr. One may ask, how can you advocate breaking some laws and obeying others? The answer lies in the fact that there are two types of laws, just and unjust. One has not only a legal but moral responsibility to obey just laws. Conversely, one has a moral responsibility to disobey unjust laws. I would agree with St. Augustine that an unjust law is no law at all. And you don't need authority to tell you that. You know yourself when you sit there and your conscience is speaking to you. Now this is what God gave to us. And anybody that says you, don't, you can't vote your conscience is trying to violate God and God's law. Because that conscience is what makes us civilized, which you know, takes us out of the barbaric stages of doing the right thing versus doing the wrong thing. So we need to obey that. I'm going to shift a little bit um, to what, what is just law. And I've got a copy here. I hope everybody will take one. Maybe Al will pass it out for us. Here, yeah. so you already got it. And Frederick Bossiat wrote a book in 1850, 1849, the Frenchman. And he was actually trying to dispel the notion of socialism in this process. And in the, in the process, he wrote, and this understanding that we came before law. Man, 
like liberty and property came before him, before law, and law was written to secure those rights. And any time the law does the opposite of that, it's not law. It's a perversion. Any time the law violates your rights, it's a perversion. So it's not the, it's not really law. And so uh, Frederick Boss said this is the, one of the best books uh, I've ever um, read on the concept of liberty and the law and the just enduring government. This is the concept our nation was founded on. People like to talk about the Constitution a lot, and they argue about it, and the left and right have different versions. But the Declaration of Independence makes a clear cut understanding that what our rights are and what the purpose of government is. And, and our rights are the ones that were listed in there, just a few, but the understanding that governments were instituted to secure those rights, those gifts of God. That's the purpose of government. And when it goes to the contrary, it is violating those rights. And so if you couple the understanding of what is true and what is just law, and St. Augustine um, stated, and we've all been taught, that any law repugnant to the Constitution is null and void, even though we do the opposite oftentimes. Uh, you know, even when the federal government is sitting in and doing issues that are that belong to the state and the county. Uh, let's say if it's an issue of um, like drugs. If the state, the state should have control of domestic, all domestic laws, and not the federal government. The federal government was an, an, an agent of the states. So if the federal government reaches in and says, we're going to have occupation, safety, health, and accident, what our OSHA is, um, legislation, and they use that as a justification to, they use the Commerce Clause as a justification to regulate what businesses in California do, they're stripping us of our Constitution in the process. Because the Constitution says all the power time granted to the federal government are revert, reserved to the states and the people respectively. So there's an example where you might agree with the law, but the jurisdiction is wrong. And the jurisdiction of federal government taking jurisdiction where it doesn't have is very dangerous because we end up with a Soviet-style system where central government controls everything. So next one on that, Al? Oh, well, yeah, obviously have no political agenda, no stake in the trial outcome, and serve as the conscience of the community. The whole concept of, of, concept of trial by jury is that it's the community that would find this act repugnant. Not 51% of people, but the community. And we, the, whole, the whole community finds things like theft, robbery, <coughs> murder, rape, vandalism, fraud. We all find them repugnant. And so those are the things that violate people's life, liberty, and property. Those are the things we want the law to respect and uphold. So I'm not going to go out in any more slides. We've only got five minutes. I'd rather entertain some questions than the five minutes. Yes, sir. So how many times will you be selected for a jury for say you're I'm going to vote for conscience? None. None. Yeah. And you know, I sit there and I'm watching that process. Um, I just see that this, they're just directing the verdict. They're stacking the verdict. And especially when it's the government against the citizen who has harmed no one. You know, it's just like, uh, that's as bad as we go back into our history and some of these things in our history, they're going to lock somebody up. Is as bad as the institution of slavery? A modern day kind. Anybody else? Yes, sir. It just says it, it has something to do with the law. My, it, my wife, she was on the computer last night. She was, uh, I think it was a case of some vandals up in the Oceanside area the other day uh, vandalizing a flag, uh, a couple of uh, older people and, and whatnot. And it kind of sent her off on a tirade, and it just it kind of led to other things. And she was asking me, and I said, well, I, I always thought there was a law, uh, but I don't know if it was actually a law for you know defama defamation or uh, yeah. uh, Defacing, defacing the flag. And, uh, Whose flag was it? 
It was our the United States flag. But I mean, it was his. It, it was just a general person's flag. The demonstrator, or the guy that burned it. No, no, it wasn't. No, this 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 was yeah, just, just it was written on. Okay, but it kind of brought out something that my wife was saying. You know, people burning flags, people uh, urinating on flags, doing things like this, desecration of the flag. I guess is the, the proper right. proper. Is, is there actually a law? I mean, because you never, at least, you never hear of anybody now, back during Vietnam and stuff, you heard about prosecutions and stuff. Yeah, there's no law, not if it's their property. Okay. All right. If it's their property, as foul and disgusting and as vile as we might find that, uh, if it's their property, uh, the morons and the idiots, uh, you know, don't do it. Uh, we can't prosecute my boy. Uh, yeah, that's, and, and that's something not, else she, she was saying, she said, you know, if, if a flag is tattered, it shouldn't be displayed. Right. Or, or if it's displayed at night, it should be illuminated. And I'm saying, I don't know if these are actual laws. No, no, that this no, is no. respect no, actually, the flag. if they were laws, they would be violating somebody's freedom. If I have a flag and I have the, the flag up and I left it up there, and didn't have a light on it, I, I don't think I should be fine or for that. You know? No, no, it's, it's, but these were things that she was asking me, 